Oil pastels, a lot of people have no clue what they are and a lot of artists don't know what they are because they've been exposed to cheaper student grade ones when they were in art school, which are basically crayons. But when you get a professional grade uh, uh, oil pastel, it's like going from 40 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour. There's so much more you can do with them. And they were originally developed in 1947, 1949, right in there. Uh, an artist you might know by the name of Pablo Picasso with another artist approached Sennelier, Sennelier and said, we want something new. We want some sort of a new medium to work with that will go on anything. And so they came up with oil pastels. And so from there, it's just basically taken off. And what's really wonderful about these is that they're so forgiving and they're very vibrant, you know, the pigment in them. And that's basically what it is. It's oil, paint, pigment, and it's wrapped in different waxes and binders. And that's why it has its stick form. But you can also thin them down. And I just clip off pieces and I thin it down with odorless terpenoid. And then it makes kind of a, a, kind of a goopy paste but then you can get used to how it works and then you can do just some phenomenal layering work with the oil pastel paste. I'm very satisfied. I love it. Uh, it's okay for my first one. I know next time, but I'm really happy with, for the very first time ever working with these materials that I've got what I've got going so far. Hello guys, you're watching Vexit. My name is John, and I'm here with Scott Turner, and he's an oil pastel artist, and he's gonna uh, tell us a little bit how he got started, uh, what motivates him, and uh, how he got to where he is today in terms of uh, teaching and instructing people on oil pastels. So, uh, what was it that brought you into uh, doing art? Well, in, uh, presently for the oil pastel, artwork, uh, my son sent me a uh, set of oil pastels for Christmas in 2005. Okay. And uh, with a note that said, draw me a picture, Dad. So I let him sit there for about six months. And then when I picked him up, I never put him down. I just really fell in love with the medium. And then about 2000. And I think right around there, I started doing shows, uh, juried shows around the uh, around the state and whatnot. And so, yeah, it just kind of went from there. Uh, and what was your first subject? My first subject? It was probably a very, well, it was a very, very small landscape. I can probably show you a picture of it. This is, this is probably oil pastel number four or five that I did in probably 2006 or 2007. And that was with a student grade oil pastel, but this is where I fell in love with the medium because I found you can really do some cool stuff with it. You do a lot of abstracts mm -hmm. and you do a lot of landscapes. Yeah, I really, I really kind of split it up. I love doing portrait work. I do a lot of portrait work. I've done a lot of portrait work over the last couple of years, but you know, I really love my landscape work and I love my abstract work. So I'm kind of, I kind of split myself between all three of them. As you can tell the, the work behind me, that's the, uh, some under glass work. And that's a little, uh, more, a lot more of abstract, but I love doing that. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting back to my landscape work because I haven't done some for a while. Uh, and when you're doing your landscape, are you working from a photo from your mind or a little bit of both? Or? Well, uh, sometimes I use photos for a reference, for like a composition or a color scheme. But when I've tried to like paint the photo, I get into it about 30%, eventually throw the thing away and just go on my own and just finish it out. But, you know, a lot of my landscape work is, is stuff that I've, um, you know, I've seen. You know, I've been mm -hmm. in the Southwest now 30, 35 years and I was raised in Anchorage and so those scenes my northern landscapes are things I've seen before sometimes I can't remember where they were at because it was 45 years ago but you know I've seen them and so that explains it because I did notice that um, 
some of your work, it looks like icebergs. Yeah. I totally <laughs> noticed that, and that was really what drew me in. Uh, and I also noticed that some of your paintings have like a warmer, deserty feel too. Yeah. So you yeah. have the extremes. <laughs> yeah, it kind of splits between the northern theme and the and the southwest theme. Right. You know, so. What was it like growing up in Anchorage? I mean. It, well, it was a lot of fun actually. It was the seventies when I was in high school, so uh, I did a lot of hiking, a lot of climbing. Uh, yeah, a lot of skiing. Yeah, did you, you know, see a lot, lot of, of skipping wildlife? school to go skiing? Yeah. <laughs> did you see a lot of wildlife out there? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, that's awesome to learn. Part of what is uh, motivates the artist to do the work that they do, and that's definitely prevalent in your work. Um, and so you're also uh, teaching as well now, aren't you? Yeah, and that's one thing I'm very proud of is that I am the uh, first and only oil pastel artist instructor at the uh, Scottsdale Artist School. So I've been teaching there since about 2018, 2018. Yeah, right wow. around in there. And actually, I've got a class coming up this next weekend. Hopefully, we can make it out there. That would be really cool to see you in action teaching. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. In a nutshell, this is the project, okay? And you know what, yours is gonna look completely different. None of yours are gonna look the same, I guarantee it. I have all my classes, I've never seen two pieces look the same. But this is the, this is the, the basis for what we're doing. And what we're going to do first is we're going to lay down a series of colors. It's a base color for your rock. Okay? We're going to lay those colors down. We're going to blend them in with our paper towel and our turpenoid. We're going to blend them in nice and smooth and stuff like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to put our sky colors in. And then we're going to overlap because we've sprayed this bottom color. We're going to overlap with our blue, our sky, our clouds, whatever, over the top of the colors that we've laid down here. Because then what we're going to do is because we've sprayed that base color, those base colors we put down, we've sprayed them, and then we've gone ahead and put our blue, our sky, our clouds, and we overlap it. Then we come back with our palette knife, and then we carve a really nice, super crisp rice. I want you to do, pick out, first, first of all, you, may, you need to have an idea of what your horizon line is going to look like. Is it going to be a peak? Is it going to be a series of peaks in the, in the distance? Okay, for me, I'm, for this thing, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to lightly draw that in. So you know where you're, where you're starting from. Then I'm going to take a series of colors and I'm going to be blend, and I'm going to be doing it in a serpentine manner. That's gone? Yeah, it's kind of a serpentine manner like this. Just color in. And I'm just using the red and stuff on here. It'll be like this, and I'll go to each one of you and tell you where you, know, where you need to fill in. I would, and keep some space in between it, a little white space, because when you take your paper towel and your turpentine and you start blending, you want to make sure that your yellow doesn't get dominated by the orange that you have next to it. So it's like this, see how that orange kind of blended in really nice with that yellow there? That's what you want. There you go. And remember, this is all a learned technique. Okay, good. Good. You're already, yeah, good. Okay, go ahead and you know, get that color in, you know. And remember, we're gonna be going over with a darker color. So you may want to have a darker color up here because you're gonna have dark, you know, a little darker than that. 
okay? And then even lay over here. But don't be too tied to the pitchers because I just want to show you the technique. But get your bands of color in. Some bands of color in there, good. That's good. Yeah, you may want to get a little more. Yeah, you got it. That's going to work. Go in your gut, go in your gut, under your college choices. You have one younger student that is just. Yeah, my, uh, my nine year old, she's a little older now. She's like 11, I think, but when she was nine, uh, I did some private lessons for her, and she turned out some really great work. That's awesome. I'm the, uh, I'm the uh, official oil pastel artist for a company called Savoy Fair, and they are the exclusive North American distributor of um, Sennelier products. Definitely has me uh, wanting to explore a lot more in this museum. And, and I truly appreciate the fact that um, Scott showed us the difference in materials to understand what the, the leap is from a basic product to a professional product because it, having done that at the beginning of the class is light and day in terms of understand night and day excuse me in terms of understanding what you can do with the right tools and materials. and then give it one or third coat. How do you feel when you are uh, creating your work? It's more of, of uh, it's kind of a problem solving things because you know I was never, I received no formal instruction is the oil pastels. I had to learn all by myself. And so it was a, a process of experimentation. How do I achieve this effect? How do I achieve that effect? How do I balance these two colors together? How do I compose this picture? So it's, it's really a, a, uh, a, a series of problem solving events, if that's that, that's the word for it. So I love that. Right. I love that portion of it and solving riddles. Looks that too for me with my painting. A lot of my breakthroughs uh, were mistakes I made in trying to like make that mistake work to something creative. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Any artist will tell you they make a lot of mistakes, you know, and then you go back and you fix them. But that's the nice thing about oil pastels is that they're extremely forgiving. You know? uh, and then are you working on a lot of layers when you're doing your work? Yes. 
when I do my uh, landscape work and portrait work, it's all it's all layers. It's all a and then I noticed of that there's some brush work. Is that is that in my my portrait? Well, my portrait work is basically all brush work. I thin down the turpin, I thin down the oil pastel with odorless turpenoid and make a paste out of it. And I can show you my palette here, what it looks like. But for my landscape work, it's all fingertip and palette knife work. There's very little, if any, brush work in it at all. All right, well, this is my palette right here. This is what I use to mix all my oil pastels on when I'm doing portrait work or, you know, whatever. And again, like I was saying, is that you can take the solid oil pastel, chip it off, and then with the odorless turpenoid that I put in one of these, I can take and mix it on my palette to get any color uh, that I'm looking for. And this, this is very nice because I can clean it off really fast because it's stainless steel. This is like, here's the odorless turpenoid. And also that you'll see there, I have a variety of brushes, uh, things to uh, uh, move it with. I use my toothbrush a lot for different, for different effects. I have a custom made palette knife that my wife carved for me. She carved that all out. She's a custom jeweler, by the way. And so you see the difference between the two. And I use this a lot for doing very fine and detailed work. Is that all my landscape work is done with a uh, palette knife and fingertips because the oil pastels are a very tactile medium. They're not for your standard painter. I mean, you're in there with your fingers, you're smooshing, you're shoving, you're blending, you're pushing it. I mean, sometimes I use the palm of my hand even to move the material along, but mostly my fingertips and then my palette knife, which really means I use a lot of paper towel to clean up with. <laughs> I wish sometimes that I had stock in brawny towel because man, I go through a lot of paper towel. But that's the only way that, uh, that's the best way for me to utilize the material. And so as you see some of my landscape work, you'll, you can see some of the detail that you goes all through here. These different bands of color that go through there. Those are on the bottom. Those are on the first layer. And so that's how you start it out. You start out with your, 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 your base colors. And now you put them in in a, in a ribbon effect like this. And then there's a way to seal the color. And then you put more color on top. And then you can come back with your palette knife and literally scrape it off to where you're revealing the color below, but you're also leaving, you know, the color that you put on top, which is how you get this, uh, that's how you get this effect. I can actually, I can come, I can actually come in and, and change the contour of that, just like this. Moving it, keep it there, and say, oh, I want to, uh, say, I don't like that. I don't like that. So, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come in and scrape it all out. And I'm going to change it. And I'm going to blend it into that rock there to make it look like it was a, a continuation. Now I just joined the two together. Just like that. And then I might get a, some other color and get it in there and smooth it in. Smooth that transition together. But see that color, that color band flows through there. And that's a wonderful thing about oil pastels is that I can put this piece down for six months and come back to it and start right up where I was because the oil pastels do not dry until uh, they do not dry and therefore they do not oxidize either. The colors stay really vibrant for years and years and years and years. And so when I'm finished with the work, that's when you put a fixative over the top to seal it. So. Uh, that it protects the work and also uh, makes it so you can't damage it. <laughs> it's fun. It's a lot of the, the ability to manipulate. Um, and knowing how forgiving they are, it truly, um, knowing you can make a mistake and remove 
more material as opposed to having it go down and be a permanent fixture of what you're doing is incredibly freeing. Because it does allow you to experiment as you're creating something as opposed to feeling like you have to have the um, your finished piece composed in your mind before you even start the project. So this has been um, an incredible experience so far with a new medium for me. So. Coming through? Yeah. You probably want to spray it and then the white won't make Okay. Yeah, so spray. it's sprayed and that stuff in the background, I blend it. Bring it off and putting it back on. <laughs> really enjoying this. Is this your first time with one of these pastels? Never before in my life have I used this media. This box was brand new when I started this class. What brand is it? It is. Terrible at pronouncing this. Sellier. And I love the fact that this particular palette that I selected actually has all of the um, natural colors you would use for a landscape. Takes some of the guesswork out for a beginner. Wow. I'm very satisfied. I love it. You've got your light in all the right spots. It's just connecting with some of this stuff. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, look at that. Squint your eyes. <laughs> Did you think you were going to do that when you walked in this morning? No. And so in my classes, that's what I, I teach people three basic techniques, mm -hmm. you know, washes, layering, and scraping. I understand that you are self-taught. Is there an artist that inspires you when you're doing your work or? Well, you know, I don't compare myself to other artists. Mm -hmm. I love Ed Mel. Okay. You know, I love Ed Mel work. I just... I love his work, but I don't try to emulate or gotcha. copy Ed Mel. Okay. You know, I love his work. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe that, you know, my work is unique as any other artist's work is unique. Right. And they, I don't compare myself to them. And I tell my students never to compare them, to compare their work with anybody else's work because their work is unique. You know, there's nobody else that can do what you do. Right. You know, so, and appreciating art is so subjective. You just never know what people are going to like or dislike. And so you can never have hurt feelings right. because, you know, if somebody doesn't like your artwork, it's okay because there's somebody else that will, you know, and my, my artist statement is very simple. It's if you love what you do, others will too. I love that. Yeah. And so, you know, I people have come into, you know, some of my shows, like uh, very recently we had the art show here in the house. They just, they just, boom, they saw it and they went, that's it. That's what I want. You know, and they bought four pieces. Right. And it was just like, yeah. And that's, you know, other people walk in, they circle through and they're out. They don't like it. And it's just like, that's cool. Right. You know. I love that. Can I quote you in my videos? If you love what you do, others will too. Sure. That is very powerful. And I'm pretty sure your students love your positive uh, outlook on art and life. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to probably show, well, we're definitely going to show more because this guy is amazing. Stay tuned. 
Scott Turner. If you are interested in taking one of the classes at Scottsdale Art School with Scott Turner, you can just go on their website. Link will be below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I do appreciate you guys' time. Have a great day.